church right there. Hello, hello, welcome back to my corner of the world where we talk about life and we live it together. I hope you had a fantastic Memorial Day, not only with what you did and how you spent the day off, but remembering why we live in this country and the freedoms that we have and the blessing it is that our uh, troops and the people in our past fought for this freedom. And I hope that you remembered it well. Typically I do a CrossFit workout called Murph, which remembers one of the men that fought for us uh, who died and uh, decided not to. <laughs> I mean, for other reasons. As you saw in the intro, Tad and I went to Out of Africa Wildlife Experience on Memorial Day. We got the tickets way back uh, in December from his parents, but decided to finally use it. And uh, it was a good day. As you can tell, we saw a snake. Um, not in a cage, by our feet. <laughs> but jumping right in, today's video is strong women in leadership. One of my favorite topics, not just because I'm a woman, but because in ministry I have worked alongside and been uh, a part of a church that really values women. And I have seen the expertise of wisdom and strength and passion that women carry. I mean, they are really, really, really awesome creatures. I mean, women are are fierce. And I wanted to dive into why it is important to have women at your workplace. Why strong women are crucial to the functionality and the presence that your workplace carries. Why it's important to have women. And I wanted to make a disclaimer that um, I am not a feminist. <laughs> I am not making this video to defend myself that because I'm a woman. I'm not making this video because something recently happened to me where a man mauled over me. None of that. I am simply making this video because I find the value and the ministry, the value of the ministry that women give and how they love people and how it is very crucial in ministry and how it's crucial to your work environment. So as I was praying this week, and I, you know, maybe I should share, I should share this. Okay, so last week I prayed about what video I was supposed to do. And the Lord was like, Eden, I want you to talk about women in leadership. And I was like, nah, I'm okay. And then I did that other one. It was like three things I've learned about working at a church. And I totally ignored him. And this week I sat down to pray about it again. And he was like, Eden, I want you to do women in leadership. And I was like, ugh, I don't, not that I don't want to, but like, I just I wasn't feeling it. And so anyways, I decided to sit down. I'm like, okay, Lord, I'll do it this week. So I sat down and I felt like all this stuff came to me and I was super stoked about it and got all this information, wrote all this stuff down. So I'm really excited to share. But then I decided and he, well, I didn't decide. God gave me the idea to post on my Instagram story. And this was so cool because I posted and I wanted your feedback, blah, blah, blah. We'll get to that. But what was so cool is when I posted that, someone reached out to me. Her name is Becca Schaefer. Shout out. She reached out to me. I've never met this girl, okay? She's a sister of a friend that I met like a decade ago at this camp in Tennessee. I mean, this random connection. And she's been following me. And she's like, hey, I've been praying for a mentor. And you happen to be posting about women, strong women in leadership. And God put your name in my heart. And I was just, it, she's like, it was like confirmation for me that when you posted that story. And I was like, okay, God, I'm not going to ignore your voice anymore. <laughs> I'm gonna, okay, this, this probably would have happened last week had I, you know, listened to God's voice. So anyways, long story short, we are talking about strong women in leadership and uh, maybe a little tidbit on uh, listening to God's voice. It'll always lead you to the right direction. So to start while I was praying, I felt like the very first thing that God told me was there is a place for women. And it's a very specific place. And I'm gonna start out kind of heavy because I wanna set up the stage a little bit. Today, our culture has made women out to be maybe a little vicious, and maybe it's, it's, it's women's fault that women have um, become so angry at the fact that they feel like they don't have a place. And this makes me sad because women in, in our society, maybe believers or non-believers and the like, think that they don't have a place. They think that there is only one place and that society has given that place to man. And that's not true. Man has a place, but woman has her own place. She has her place in society. She has her own place and her own role in culture 
and in our world. And that's kind of what I want to what I want to dive into today is the power of women and the place that women has in our world. So to reiterate on what I just said, women have a place, but it does not look like a man's place. Now, I don't mean that women can't be CEOs or women can't be leaders. That is absolutely not what I'm saying. But what women have twisted in their minds is that we have to dominate or that we have to fight for our place and that we have to take man's place from them to become powerful. That is not of the word of God. That is um, tearing down a brother and that is self-promotion and that is pride. And it makes, yeah, once again, it makes me sad because women are forgetting the fact that God created them specific for created them for specific reasons and a specific purpose that they're not living out because they're trying so hard to become man. And that's not what we're called to be. We're not called to be man. We're called to be woman. We were taken out of man by the rib, right, in the Garden of Eden, and we were made in our own being, or we were made our own being out of the image of God. And so we have specific characteristics that make us unique, and we should celebrate those, and we should operate out of those blessings and out of that creation rather than try to become man. So the goal is not to become man, but to carry the wisdom and the strength that is different from man the way that God intended women to carry it. And I want to I want to emphasize that our strength and that our wisdom is not secondary. It is just as important as man's leadership or man's strength. It is equal to And we operate, you know, in marriage, we operate together as a team. And same can be in a workplace. So women try to operate, once again, in the form of man or or become man, become dominant over men, um, which overall leads to frustration and disappointment. And I believe that's what has led to feminism. Women become so blocked up and frustrated with society not giving them a chance because they're trying so hard to become something they're not. And they end up disappointing themselves um, because they're choosing a path that is not supposed to be theirs. So with that being said, I want to reference something that I posted, I think like a year or so ago. Sounds kind of cocky, I know, sorry. Um, But I feel like I wrote it pretty well. And (laughs) it got a lot of feedback. A lot of women really appreciated it when I posted it. Um, I went through this phase last year just just kind of becoming angry at feminism and why women feel so defensive to prove themselves to men or prove themselves to the world. And so I started to do some studies on it. And um, I'm not going to try to rephrase it because I think I phrased it pretty well. So I'm just going to read it from my post. This is on Instagram if you want to check it out. But um, I found the word, the Greek word of woman is, uh, I'm not going to pronounce it right, but thylus, T-H-E-L-Y-S. And it means the other wonderful half of the divine image. So good, right? So this is what I posted. Dominance and power have ridden the heart of woman. What was meant to be a cohesive dance of woman's submissiveness and a man's radical love has become a battle of control and preeminence. Men and women were created equal along with their specific roles as such. Disorder and chaos fill our culture as the war for power rages. Sexes fight for it continues. But yes, women have a voice. It's strong and it's beautiful when carried by wisdom. It's full of passion and love, and when lived out by original design, woman is a force to be reckoned with. Feminism is not a necessity when we women realize she has her role in society. When we protect the value of gender difference, we choose to honor, respect, and love the other. That's the key right there, honor and respect the other. We would not have been made male and female if we didn't have our distinct purposes to live out. So true. Our fallen world has brought distortion, but the truth brings us into the light of our pure and whole sexual identity. And I felt passionate about that because once again, I just I just see women fighting for for something that is not supposed to be theirs because they weren't created to be that. And the chaos and the disorder in the heart of woman has has ripped apart the maybe tainted the reputation of how beautiful woman can be and the purpose that she has and the purpose that she holds it is it is powerful woman is powerful and our church teaches this in our women's group 
and we ha- we host this women's group or this uh, retreat called Paula Mayo that's in house, and I love the way that our women's pastor Faith Cummings describes women as the helper, and that's how when women w- woman was created, she's described as the helper, which you know helper kind of sounds in our English term sounds a little bit. Um, lame (laughs) or like oh i'm just the small help but that word helper in the bible means the holy spirit it means the voice basically it means like the presence the manifested presence of god the holy spirit as the helper that is no small help and so when women if women realize that just that alone before anything else we talk about just that alone if women realize the power that we have not to dominate, not to get rid of man or to step on man, but the beautiful value that we carry, that we own, that we have, that we're created to operate in, it is powerful. So I posted on Instagram on my story asking what you guys thought made a great, strong female leader or characteristics or what you value in a female leader. And before I get to those, because I want to share them because they were really cool because they lined up with a lot of what I'm going to say, which is super awesome, but I wanted to share mine first. And so my first one, I guess before I go into them, I want to say that the ones that I chose are typically characteristics that women get knocked down for. The fact that we're emotional, the fact that we're nurturing, that we're um, gentle or, or whatever, like emotional creatures. We get kind of knocked down for those. And I want to really reiterate the fact that that is not a weakness. And a lot of these come from that. So here we go. Number one, the things that make us great leaders are that we're nurturing and that we care about people over numbers. A lot of modern companies these days are starting to see the value in promoting people over production and really starting to get to know their employees well and and get to know their strengths and know their weaknesses so that they can place them according to those strengths and weaknesses within their company. And women have a natural God-given ability to nurture and to grow people because that's literally what we do. We grow humans. (laughs) And so since women are so good at that, we're really good at this new modern way of, of caring about people and not just having them for numbers or um, statistics that we really do love and honor people because we're made to nurture and to grow, literally grow people. And so that's a benefit to a workplace because we can sit down with someone and we can get to know them and we can nurture them and we can grow them according to their strengths. And that is a huge benefit to a company because you keep your people longer because they feel cared for and those people grow in the position that they're given not just because they're there, but because we have a natural God-given gift to place people where they belong and, and see their strengths and place them in a position accordingly. The next thing is that we're really good at multitasking. <laughs> so with the high level of demand uh, that, I don't know, children, cooking, working out, cleaning, making the hubby happy, <laughs> we're really good at getting the job done and getting it done really well. You want me to schedule a meeting? Got it. You want me to make this phone call? Check. You want me to get you a latte? Check. I'll get me one too. You know what I'm saying? This next one is one of my favorites because it kind of knocks the stigma of women being emotional. It is that we have emotional intelligence. And guys, if there is something that you get out of this video, it is that emotional intelligence is so crucial to your team. It is so crucial to your life. It is so crucial to what you're trying to do in your in your work environment because it promotes health and it promotes just overall honesty in your team because it keeps people talking and that's what you want in your in your workplace. Women have a keen sense of when someone is sad or grumpy or angry. Women have a really keen sense as to when someone walks into a room and they're grumpy or they're angry or they're feeling sad, they have a keen sense of knowing, hey, that person feels really off. Like we just kind of know, like we got that little mom sense going on, you know what I mean? I'm not a mom, but I feel like I know what that's like. Like that person is really sad. We should go talk to them and let's see, let's figure out what's wrong. We basically have a really good gauge when it comes to the grumpies. Because we're emotionally intelligent, it is easier for us to have conversations about emotions. And so we can easily sit that person down and say, hey, like I know you're, I feel like you're really going through something. Like, can you please 
uh, explain what's going on so we can figure it out. I'm sorry if you can hear my cat in the background. She is trying to get in. I'm going to go see what's up. Come on. Come on. Come on. Yeah, pick a side. By the way, look at my outfit. I literally just put a shirt on and uh, I have basketball shorts on. <laughs> so, because we are emotionally intelligent, we can allow others to let their guard down and to really begin to explain how they're feeling and explain what's going on because if the if you let emotions fester within your workplace or in your environment even at home we all know that that just doesn't end well it leads to destruction because you're burying feelings and then one day you might explode and so women are really good at knowing hey this person is in like a lot of turmoil or this person is really experiencing the grumpies or whatever it is. We just know and we can figure that out. So the last point that I wanna make is that women defy the odds. Like the great goddess rising victoriously from the ashes. We are infamous. But for real, there are incredibly amazing historical women that have completely defied the odds. Like Esther and the King or Amelia Earhart or Rosa Parks, you name them. They're all amazing women and they all have defied the odds when it came against them. And they stood up for what they believed and they pursued it with complete courage. Queen Elizabeth herself once said, though the sex which I belong is considered weak, you will nevertheless find me a rock that bends to no wind. Ooh, mm, yes! Excuse me, that's mine. No. Can you, can you not interrupt? This is why I didn't want to let you in. Do you... Tell the people. Tell them. I annoy my mom. And I annoy you with kisses. Seriously, if I love on her too hard, she gets really mad. Goodbye. Anyways, so basically what I'm trying to say is that women do not have to fight to become man. We don't have to fight to become something that we're not. We have our own power. We have our own strengths that make us powerful, that make us worthy, that make us totally capable of blessing people in ministry, leading people strongly and courageously, we already have it because we have the Holy Spirit. We are the helper. We are bold. We're women, gosh dang it. We are the divine other half. Can I get an amen? Men cannot do what we can do, and that's for a reason. And we should have no desire to become them, except to pee standing up. That'd be kind of nice. But let me wrap up this section with this. You will not become the leader, the female leader that you were called to be if you are choosing to do it outside of the grace of God. If you try to do it on your own, your flesh will become louder than your spirit. You will be angry, you'll be violent, you'll be disappointed and frustrated for the rest of your life. But if you walk in God's grace and you walk in his identity for you, then girl, you're gonna fly, okay? You're gonna fly and that's the truth. So now I wanna read some comments that we got from some people. Um, I posted and asked people, hey, what do you think a strong female leader is? What do you think it's like? What do you believe is a strong female leader? And I got some great responses and I'm gonna give some shout outs. So first of all, shout out to uh, Mary Aiello, formerly known as Mary Van Fleek. Girl, I miss you so much, girl. She replied, I think any leader I've looked up to always is always in pursuit of God's wisdom. They're like a lion. They know how to get low and quiet and then they go for it at just the right time with strategy. That's a really great one. I, I really value meekness in a female leader and that kind of goes along with it. It's the silent, it's the, it's the quiet strength and the quiet wisdom inside a woman but then when they know the time is right they pounce i think that's so awesome too um women who can process their emotions but know how to not let emotions lead them that's a really strong statement and that's kind of what i was saying earlier is that emotional intelligence is a good thing like she said letting your emotions lead you that is where you can get in trouble so keeping wisdom and keeping grounded um women she also said women leaders who are motivated to Encourage, equip, and care for their team. That's awesome too. Whoa. That is a really, really strong statement too. Um, I lead a team of, of youth leaders at church. Shout out if that's you. So yeah, that is that can be interesting. Maybe that's another video I could make is uh, leading your team. I have struggled. I'm a young leader. I'm only 24. And I've led worship for over a decade now. But I have, I have only recently in these last two or three years 
actually led a team. And it can be really hard because it's, it is hard to keep people motivated, especially when it's youth oriented. I feel like since I've worked in, I, I've led youth worship for years, but now leading a youth team, it is hard to keep people motivated. It's hard to keep people encouraged. And so that is a really, really powerful gift. If a woman can keep a strong woman leader can keep their team motivated. Next one is, um, Angel. I don't know how to say your last name, girl. So I, and, and Chetta. Is that how you say it? I'm not going, I'm going to butcher it. I butchered it. I already did. I did it already. Okay, so she said, one trait I love about a good, strong female leader is that they embrace their emotions healthily and don't hide them. Kind of like what we just said. But some of the strongest and most influential women I know have felt deeply outwardly expressed their emotion healthily, even through tears and are simultaneously steady in the Lord and stand in his truth. It's one of the most beautiful things when women can embrace that. And I think that is awesome. When we're not ashamed of our emotion, it is truly, truly a beautiful thing. Uh, lastly, um, <laughs> a man. I, I, only one guy replied, and maybe men were just afraid to reply about this because it, it, is, it is sensitive. I agree. First, he said um, that if churches keep the male leadership only thing going, then they're missing out on a lot of amazing leaders, which is, I think, was really sweet. He, was ki he said he was kind of kidding, but he said four things, and these were kind of cool. They rhymed, lead, feed, meet, meet a need, and intercede. So four things of a good leader, he said it kind of in general, lead, give with clear vision and direction to a team and push them close to that vision. Awesome. Feed, constantly pushing the team further into their craft in Jesus. Meet a need, know your team well enough personally and know them when there is a problem or an issue and then intercede, just be praying for your team. I think those are awesome. I love that they rhyme too. I really emphasize with him the meet a need. So like I said before, women have a natural tendency to know their to know people and to have just a sense for emotion and sense for what they need. And our team at church really, really emphasizes the like Enneagram and personality tests and all that stuff. And I think that's awesome because when you know a person and someone feel like when, when last time you felt seen by somebody, did it make you want to go away or did it make you want to stay? It made you want to stay, right? You wanted to stay because that person saw you, you felt seen. And when a person feels seen, they feel like they're known on a team. That is power, right? Like that's powerful when a person on your team feels known and loved. And that's just general leadership. That's not totally specific to strong female leaders. Anyways, that kind of wraps up today's video, but I wanted to end with a challenge. If you are a female leader, did anything poke your heart today? Did anything kind of put up a mirror to yourself? And, and, and did you see yourself as that leader or were there things that you needed to work on? Do you need to work on courage? Do you need to work on not trying to dominate men and not trying to climb the ladder? Do you need to um, be more self-aware with your emotions? Do you let them get the best of you or do you know how to um, use them wisely and use them to your ability? Still feel them and still know them, but use them in a wise, um, d meek and discerning way. Or are you too shy? You know, do you, do you, are, do you, is there an opportunity in front of you that is presenting itself and do you need to go for it? Is there something in your path that is there? And if there's anyone that can tell you to go for it, it's me. Because even just moving to Phoenix, I moved 2,000 miles away from everything that I knew. And it was the hardest thing I've ever done. I've led worship and been on platforms since I was 13 years old. I was an RA in college. And if anyone was an RA, they know it's not an easy job. I have started this YouTube channel. And it is hard. It is scary. And I'm a woman. And sometimes I do get backlash for the things that I do. But I don't care. Because I know what Jesus has told me. I know what God has spoken to me as a female leader. Yeah, there are some churches that, you know, don't really believe in having female leaders. And if that's not a place for you, then don't go there. Go to a place that embraces who you are. Go to a place that loves women and that cherishes the heart of woman and who she is and what she's made to do and who she's made to be. I've been blessed with people and leaders that value me and really speak life into me and I wanna do that for you. If you're a woman and you have felt diminished or you have felt um, pushed aside or marginalized because you're trying to become a leader, I'm so sorry that happened to you. And I wanna say continue going for it. If you wanna start a YouTube channel, if you wanna become Instagram famous, or if you wanna become a strong female leader in the church, or you want to work really hard at your goals and your job, do it and don't let anyone stop you. If it's not the, if it's not the Lord's will, then yeah, maybe reevaluate. But if God is giving you a dream and he's giving you the passion for something, do it, go for it. Be that woman that he has made you to be. 
And I still struggle with this. I find myself pretty bold, but there are a lot of things. Like starting this channel took me a long time, uh, mostly because people people give backlash for being an influencer. I say bull crap. <laughs> I want to be an influencer. I want to be a Christian influencer for God's kingdom. I want to influence people. Influence is a huge deal. I want to influence the crap out of people. I want my life to be a reflection of the king, a, a reflection of the good life that God has called us to live in. And woman has a place there. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please like and subscribe. It does me a huge deal when you support me. Um, this is going to be a part of my ministry in the, in the long run. And I'm so looking forward to continue doing these with you guys and chatting with you. Please give me ideas. I have a, I have a buttload of ideas, but I want to hear your guys' ideas. What do you want me to talk about? What do you want to hear? I'll filter it through the Lord, of course, because once again, you got to listen to him. <laughs> but let me know. Thank you so much for joining me today, and I hope you have a blessed week. We'll see you next time. Bye.